one of you will earn a shot to get back to the competition. And for one of you, your Top Chef journey is, is over. The chef that's moving on. Congratulations, Byron. You are the winner of Last Chance Kitchen. This is really fantastic. Everything is just beautifully cooked, nicely presented. Oh my God, I get declared the winner of Last Chance Kitchen. Wow, talking about sneaking in there and snatching that win, but it's still not over. <laughs> I have no clue what's next. Sarah, I like yours too. This green tea and rice is strange. Green tea almost tastes like water, so it's almost like the rice is sitting in water. Oh. But it was a pleasure to see you cook again. Yeah. I know that this is the ending for me, but if I had one takeaway, it's that I do know what I'm doing, even if it doesn't seem like it. My style might seem weird to other people, but when you really think about it, it makes sense. Byron, you earned a chance to get back into the competition, but you're not there yet. But, okay. <laughs> so Chef, the stakes are high for you too. And I'm gonna assume just the odds would have it that you don't want another person coming back in. This is Last Chance Kitchen, presented by BMW. So, we're gonna give you a chance to defend your turf and keep him out of the competition. Wow. I personally want to keep it at five. Having another person come back and having to beat him again is just one more thing we have to do. We're final five, we gotta defend our turf. But first, I need you to do one thing for me. I need you to help me create this challenge. Oh shit. Ah, here we go again. <laughs> no matter what this challenge is, it is a competition. They're gonna make it hard for me. Each of you will grab a crate and go shopping in the pantry. You'll have three minutes to put 10 items in the crate from the pantry. So what you choose is up to you, and Byron will have to create a fully composed dish using those 10 ingredients. I know for sure that we're going to be cooking. I don't know how many of us or what the method will be, but we need to be ready to cook whatever we put in that box. How do you feel about this, Byron? <laughs> I mean, the momentum, I want to keep on going. You know, ah, adrenaline's okay. there and stuff, so. Uh... He wants to keep cooking, he's happy. <laughs> All right. Any ingredients you want to see in that box? I like seafood. No, it is. Well, we're going to see who your friends really are right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Byron, I need to keep a little mystery here, so while they're shopping, you can leave the kitchen for a few minutes, okay? Okay. Bye, baby. <laughs> Thank you, guys. See you in three minutes. So, Chef, your three-minute shop starts now. Woo! Get it, see the grab. <laughs> Byron asked for seafood, but you know, also I'm not gonna give him the easiest seafood. I'm gonna give him baby octopus. Seven. This top chef, I wouldn't be surprised if I have to cook, so I'm gonna make sure I have everything that I wanna cook with in the basket. You see the coconut milk? No. Ooh, get some radicchios. I start choosing my ingredients just based on giving Byron a capability to do a dish. I wanna make it accessible for him, but also push him and make him think outside of the box for a minute. Excuse me. That was crazy. My mind is racing. What is going on? What is this about? I just don't know what to expect. I'm pretty much at the mercy of all the chefs. You can't help to think of, what if I don't make it back into the competition? I don't want it to be the last day on Top Chef, so better, uh, <laughs> better be ready. Don, what are you grabbing? A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Make sure there's 10 ingredients. Yes, yeah, chef. Maria, what protein did you grab? Ribeye. Ribeye, ooh! She was like, Byron likes seafood, I'm gonna get him a ribeye. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't know if I'm gonna cook or not, so. Ah, so you wanna cook the ribeye. There we go. I need to think about myself selfishly at this point because I know the curveball is coming. 20 seconds. Where's the f***ing butter? Oh, in front of me. It's about to get weird. I would use things that I would use. Five, four, three, two, one. Yeah, time's up. All right, what do we have? Bacon. 
raisins, honey. Box with no aromatics. <laughs> uh, there are some interesting choices of ingredients here. Yes. Absolutely. But let's see what Byron thinks. Here he comes. Welcome back, Byron. You are just in time for the best part. <laughs> and all kinds of delicious things in the box. All right. I thought I would ask a few people with experience from Last Chance Kitchen to join us. Yeah. Please welcome our special guests, Brooke Williamson Hi. and Kristen Kish. Both of them, former competitors, Last Chance Kitchen winners, and Pop Chef winners. BFFs. BFFs. <laughs> okay, so Byron, there are five boxes here. Each one filled with ingredients chosen by the chefs that are still in the competition. There's 10 ingredients in each box. You have to pick three of the boxes that you want to cook three different dishes from. Okay. But choose wisely because the boxes you pick determine the chefs that you'll be cooking against. <laughs> I knew it. We need to keep them out of the competition. Having a six person back is gonna make it harder for us. Sorry, bud. So this is how it works now. Byron, you're gonna have to win two out of the three rounds to get back into the competition. Never a dull moment here in Last Chance Kitchen, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so come on up here, choose the three boxes that you're willing to cook out of. I'm not gonna tell you whose boxes they are. Box number one holds flour and eggs, and I'm like, there's no way I'm gonna bake something. Box number five, I just saw octopus, and I'm like, nope, I'm not cooking that either. Narrowing it down to two, three, and four. And I'm like, okay, I, I could get down with this. What do you think, Byron? Anything look good in there? Yeah. Which boxes would you like to cook out of? I'm gonna go with box number three and box number four. Final box will be box number two. Any idea whose box you chose? We'll have to go with Jamie. <laughs> you are correct, sir. <laughs> that is Jamie's box. <laughs> who's the chef from box number four? The Mexican. And who is the chef from box number three? Oh, Gabe, let me ask you a question. Are you trying to make this hard for Byron or easy for Byron? I'm gonna make him work. <laughs> He's my homie, but I'm gonna make him work. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> I did pick ingredients with him in mind. Byron, since the chef's got to choose the ingredients, you can choose the order of who you're gonna cook against. Okay. So who's the first chef you'll go up against? I'd like to go with the chef who had me in mind, Gabe. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, la la. The reason why I choose to go against Gabe first is because he has a vegetable-driven box. I really love working with vegetables. Radicchio is something that I'm very knowledgeable with, so I just want to kind of get the vegetable dish done with at first. Okay, who's the next one? Next one, I'm going to keep it Latin America, so Maria. So Jamie, you're third? Yeah. Okay, Gabe. Good luck, Seth. So Gabe, you're up first. There's 20 minutes on the clock, 10 ingredients. Your time starts now. Go to it! Come on, guys! I get it! All right. Let's go, guys! Yeah. I definitely feel like I have a bigger advantage on Byron. I would never pick ingredients for myself and not know what dish I'm gonna make. Time is super critical and you've gotta know exactly where you're going with it. Come on, Gabriel! I'm making a guajillo chile braised radicchio with a bacon and golden raisin jam and some wood oven roasted romanesco. Immediately, I'm gonna get the raisins cooking with some of the Riesling vinegar, and then I'm gonna make a puree out of that. Remember, it's only 20 minutes this round. Think smart. You heard, chef. While I love Byron like a brother, it's gonna make the road for the rest of us a lot longer, so I think we're gonna push him out the door today. Let's roll, let's roll. I see that there's radicchio, that's the first thing that sticks out. So I wanna make like a fresh radicchio leaf salad with a chunky guajillos, vinaigrette. I know that 20 minutes will fly by real quick, so I definitely want to keep it simple as possible. I mean, I want him to come back, but it makes it harder for us too. Yeah, you know what I mean? That is a reality. All I have to do is win two cooks, and I'm back into the competition. 16 minutes left, guys. You guys got this. I've got to get the bacon rendering, and I've also got to get some chilies soaking so that they can rehydrate and I can make a braising liquid for the radicchio. Come on, Byron! Cooking the bacon in two ways. One I deep fry, and the other one I render, and I utilize that fat 
to start composing my salad dressing. For the dressing, I utilize guajillos with hydrated golden raisins. Our guajillo is a dry chile. It has earthy and fruity notes to it. I'm composing a salad of different textures, different acidity notes, and salty flavors to it. You guys got 14 minutes left. Beautiful. Oh, oh yeah, sexy. Right. I get some of the Romanesco, dressed in some acid and oil, and put that in the wood burning over, get them nice and charred. Get that in there. Yeah. I want to quickly blanch it in a fish sauce. This will give it a crunch as well as a salty flavor to it. Go and char that up real quick. I want a nice textural component from the radicchio that eats bitter, but also is really counterbalanced with the sweet and smoky raisin bacon jam. Gabe, how you looking? Looking good. What's really worrying me about this cook is the bitterness of the radicchio. I want to present it as organic as possible. So the smokiness and the fattiness, of the bacon is going to tie all those bitter notes together. Byron, how you doing over there? Good. 13 minutes. I'm cutting the lettuce cups and just throw them on the grill so they can get that beautiful charred flavor that will complement the acidity and how pungent the radicchio is. So I think it will give another texture and another level of taste to my salad. 10 minutes! If you had to guess, who do you think's gonna win this one? I think Gabe has an advantage because he picked the basket. He came in knowing what he wanted to do. Byron's kind of winging it. Byron, feeling good? Yeah. He's bracing with the chili guajillo. Damn. Four minutes, guys. Yeah. Come on, Byron. Let's, let's go. Please let me take this one because this is very exhausting. I just want to cook one more time if I take this one, and then I don't have to even think about my third cook. <laughs> Byron, two minutes. Yep, yep. I'm feeling really confident. The flavors are all there, and I've been able to incorporate all of the 10 ingredients. 30 seconds, chef. Let's get it, Byron. Finish up. Five, Five, four, four three, three, two, two one. one. Time's up. That's it, dude. Let's go. Byron, what did you make us? So I made a salad with bacon. Underneath, you're gonna find a guajillo and raisin puree with a little bit of fish sauce. So Gabe, talk to me about this dish. So it's a guajillo braised radicchio with a bacon and golden raisin jam, some uh, wood oven grilled brassicas, and then some shaved man shake on top as well. Gabe, I like the warmth and the heartiness of this dish. I like the fact that the radicchio feels like it has some char, but it also feels sort of rich and developed. You know, I think, Byron, the thing that I like most about your dish is it has the sweetness I want to balance the bitterness, which is, I think, what's making it feel so round on my palate. Thank you. I think they're both really good dishes. I like the textures in your dish, Byron. I think there's a lot going on. The jam is really nice. Um, it adds this little sweetness, a little warmth to the dish, but the bacon is a little over-rendered, so it's like too crispy almost. Gabe, the radicchio is beautifully cooked. A lot of times people grill braised radicchio, it's not done enough. The combination of the radicchio and then the, the jam works when it's all together. First bite, it was, it was pretty bland actually, until I started eating everything together. Two solid dishes. The second. That'll make it any easier. <laughs> I love that. <sighs> so first round goes to. It's not over yet. Byron, I think he did a lot more with the radicchio. He made that the feature, and it was just a little more interesting, I think. To me, this just felt a little bit more developed yeah. as a dish. Yeah. So, Byron, this is do or die. If you don't win the next one, it's over. Yep. Losing another one is not an option. I'm pouring everything in the next two cooks. Maria, you're up. Get it, mama. I chose the ingredients with Maria in my head. I have an idea of a simple dish. Sometimes the simpler the dish, the less room for error you have. Chef's round two, 10 ingredients, 20 minutes, and your time starts now. Woo! Oh, let's go, let's go y'all. Let's go, guys! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's go, Byron. You got it, Chef. Leave it all in here, Chef. 
All the ingredients uh, are in my wheelhouse. I'm charring a few tomatoes, which I'm gonna utilize with some roasted garlic, a little bit of lime for acidity, and I'm gonna blend everything to make a roasted tomato salsa. My main goal is just to not overthink it, keep it simple, because I can't lose this round. I'm giving it my all. 17 minutes, guys. Maria, what are you making with those tomatoes? Salsa? Sí. I have an idea of a rich tomato sauce with chipotle, saffron, and just let it reduce. Yeah, mete el carne. Se va a tardar mucho. I'm gonna make a puree out of mushrooms. Oh, okay. I'm going to smother the beautiful thick piece of steak. It's going to create, I know for a fact, a beautiful crust. Okay, it's pulling out that one. Now it makes yeah, sense. Now, exactly. <laughs> Byron, you feeling good? Exhausted, dude. You're exhausted, man. Push through, bro. Push through, man. At this point, exhaustion starts kicking in. Any move that I make is more of a thought out move. I can't waste a lot of energy because I don't want to run out of gas by the time I get to my third cook. And I get some chanterelles to roast. In a separate pot, I have sweating chanterelles with onions, a little bit of butter, so it can become nice and tender for my puree. Hey, Byron, what are you making over there? Ah, uh, steak. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Beef, it's what's for dinner. My idea of this dish is to actually showcase the beautiful cut of meat and the mushrooms. Saute them, salt, pepper, and you let them be. That's the key of a mushroom. 13 minutes. That's gonna be good in that whatever. I will, I will put it whatever right now. Maria's making salsa for 25. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like people watching me. I feel like a circus monkey. I'm gonna let that sauce speak for itself. Get your steak in the oven. 1154. You guys got this. Get in the oven. Yes! Woo! Yes! That's what we wanted to see. You do a mushroom puree too? So I start making my chanterelle puree. I add on saffron as well as butter so it can become nice and smooth. Chanterelles are such a beautiful product and I think it will complement this nice steak very well. Uh-oh. Thanks. Ooh, hot. Nice, that looks good, Oh, man. yeah. Ooh. Oh, that's hot. Oh, that's hot. Oh, you got this, Byron. Oh, my God. Mushrooms look sexy. 10 minutes left, chef, 10 minutes. It's literally a matter of like beating somebody at their own game, right? Yeah, but they can, onions and mushrooms, there's a lot you can do. Beautiful. Byron, cut into your steak, chef. Check on that thing. Check on that steak. Good? Yeah. Four minutes, Byron, four minutes, chef. Byron, you feeling good over there? Ah, uh, tastes good. I'm just trying to figure out if I should fold this into this. I'm having a debate in my mind. Do I add the salsa? Do I not add the salsa? I know it has a nice chard and acidic flavor to it. The puree has butter and it, uh, the chanterelles. So everything is very rich, but uh, I'm not sure exactly what to do. Nice work, chef. You guys got three minutes. I don't want to cook because I, I was very anxious already. So I hope Maria wins the challenge. The whole cooking was great. Everything was looking good. So uh, I was coming down to the plating. Do I add it on? Is it gonna make sense? I felt like the dish ate rich and I'm like, okay, it needs something to cut this fattiness. And I utilized the roasted tomato salsa. I'm hoping this doesn't come back and bite me in the ass. 147, chef. There you go. How you doing, Byron? Good. If I go home for this dish, I will be extremely upset. Nice. Ooh, that's sexy, girl. 45 seconds. The plate looks gorgeous. I am happy. The steak is cooked stupid pretty. Looks good, mama. I'll take a hand piece. Thank you, mama. A little bit more salt. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands up, all right. How are you? A little bit more. Good job, guys.
Okay, Aaron, what'd you make? So I made a pan-roasted New York strip with a chanterelle and saffron puree, roasted mushrooms, and then we have a roasted tomato, roasted garlic, and chipotle sauce. Maria, what did you make for us? Grilled tomato and onion saffron sauce with sauté mushrooms, and this steak is rubbed in more mushrooms and uh, ancho powder. I tasted the sauce first. Mm -hmm. It felt a little salty to me, but the beef has a lot of flavor too, so it stands up to it. I actually I feel like these mushrooms are the star of the show. These mushrooms that taste like mushroom butter and they're perfectly charred. Byron, I think my favorite part of your dish is the saffron chanterelle puree. It acts as like that aioli situation that you love at like a classic steakhouse. And I thought the technique was really lovely. Thank you. Maria, meat's nicely cooked, but the mushrooms are just incredible. There's a ton of flavor in the dish. You know, Byron, I thought the mushroom puree was really fantastic. I thought the use of saffron in the dish was actually, it was a good way to get the saffron into the dish as well. Chanterelles were nicely cooked. There wasn't much difference between the two sauces in texture. It's hard to figure it out, but good dish. Thank you. Okay, give us a second. So the winner of round two, and this was unanimous, is... Fire. Yeah, still not over. One more round, baby, one more round. Maria, just a little salty. I added salt at the end. I know, my bad, I'm sorry. I do not blame Shoda, it was me that took that decision. But I'm upset at myself for letting other chefs' palate overwrite mine. All right, Byron. <laughs> you got Jamie now. Yeah. Are you tired? I'm exhausted. Yeah, well, you know, last push of the day. I have willpower. I have determination. What I need is my body to respond. I got to know, why did you save Jamie for last? I felt like she had, like, <laughs> Some of the easier ingredients. Oh, you thought those ingredients were easier to work with? Well, just wanted to get the hard out of the way. I'm not saying that your dish is not hard, chef, but. It's hard now. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of set me off. <laughs> My goal right now is just win this match. I unleash the beast. <laughs> so this is do or die. You win this one, you're back in the competition, you lose this one, you're out for good. You have 20 minutes, 10 ingredients. Your time starts now. Woo! Let's get it. Last yeah. round, baby. Go, yeah. High energy. Last push. Last push. High energy. Last Keep push. It up. Come, on. Come on, sweetheart. Yeah. I am amped up right now. I feel underestimated all the time, and he triggered me. <laughs> Woo! Get it going. Damn, girl. I knew I was playing a basket to go one on one against. Byron. So I picked the ingredients that I love cooking because I do want to win. Let's go, Byron. Come on, chef. Say yeah. it, girl. When I mentioned that Jamie's box was the easiest, that might have fired her up a little bit. <laughs> you can take my life, but you can't take my freedom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making a pork marinade and coconut and turmeric, almost curry-like sauce. All right, what are you doing with the noodles? I'm gonna soak them. Yeah. For one of the ingredients in this box that I'm thrown off by a little bit are the rice noodles. I know rice noodles, you hydrate them in cold water, but I don't have enough time. So I break them down into two containers and I let them sit there soaking in hot water. I hope they have enough time to hydrate. 17 minutes. Come on, Jamie Lynn. Get it, girl. I love watching you work, girl. Oh my God, this shop is like skinny like, like I used to be. <laughs> <laughs> I am making a seared pork chop with kale cooked in coconut milk, turmeric oil, serrano chimichurri with crispy noodles. How are you gonna do the rice noodles? I'm gonna make texture out of it. I know it's not enough time to cook the noodles properly, so I fried them to get them cut. Yeah! Woo! yeah. Byron, you still feeling the energy over there? Yeah, let's go! That's right, baby. Are you gonna grill that or are you gonna... Uh, I'm gonna grill it and then I'm gonna marinate it. Nice. She has no vinegar here. I add some turmeric, some serrano, finish it with fish sauce. Well, I don't have any options. <laughs> 15 minutes. What does that do? Turmeric oil. I'm making turmeric oil serrano chili, chimichurri, and I wanted to get the serrano cooked a bit so I can skin them and take the seeds out. I want the chimichurri to have a spice, but then like the turmeric oil to shine as well. 
How's that taste, Jamie? Spicy. What you doing with the kale, Byron? I'm making oil. Kale oil, yep. Oh. Nice move. Oh! Oh, oh. Sauce on the floor. How is this possible? The gods are on my side. 13 30. Let's go, Jamie. Let's go, Byron. Woo. Let's go. That's a beautiful green, Byron. That's pretty. Byron's working really hard. He's going full throttle, but made the best person win. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Wow, nice. some color. Ah, that oil is spicy. What's that, turmeric? Yeah, a little turmeric, fish sauce. I realized that my oil is way too spicy. It's too late to make another one, so I'm gonna drizzle as little as possible, but you still get that nice chili elements to the dish. 10 minutes! Feeling good, bro? Push it. Round three, don't fade out now. At this point, my body is so exhausted from running around that I'm not even thinking of what I'm doing. Never cooked like this before in my life. Push How they doing? They're doing great. They're cranky. It's not steering. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> Straight up on the on deck. On the deck. Do what you do. Yeah, you're like, nothing's hot enough. Perfect. I checked the rice noodles. They're still pretty hard. So I put it on the burner, turn it on, and start bringing the water up to a boil and just hoping that it's going to cook on time. Five minutes, Jeff. Five minutes. Woo. Let's go, Jamie. Come on, girl. Let's go, Byron. It's not over yet, bro. That looks so good. I know that I should rinse the noodles after they're cooked. Three and a half minutes, guys. Time is running out, and I just need to get it done, and hopefully take this round. Two minutes, Chef, two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, the implication of me being the easiest, I flipped that anxiety into motivation. I feel really good about that dish. That pork looks beautiful. 30 seconds. I'm exhausted. I'm literally giving it my all to complete this dish. Final touches. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Byron, you're a beast, kid. Oh no, I have the shakes. You're all right. You're good. Take deep breaths. Thank you. No, thank you. Beautiful dishes, y'all. Good job, guys. Yeah, Thank you, Chef. Great job. Why don't you tell us what's in your dish? So we have noodles with marinated grilled pork and coconut turmeric sauce. Jamie, what did you make for Jamie? Turmeric serrano chimichurri with a marinated roasted pork braised coconut kale. Jamie, I love the kale. I think that's my favorite part of this dish. I like the crispy rice noodles. I do wish there was a little bit more seasoning on the outside. It's spicy. Okay. So you kind of lose all that beautiful nuanced like work that you actually did. Byron, to me, that marinade was really flavorful. Your noodles, to me, felt a little bit gummy, but the flavor of the sauce was there. Flavor-wise, I think it's really nice. I agree, the noodles are a little on the gummy side. The pork, you know, I think it's one of these things where you either leave it whole or you grind it. The fact that the pork is cut into little cubes makes it feel like an afterthought. Okay. Jamie, spicy. I agree, the kale just created a really nice texture, so it's a nice counterpoint against the crispy noodles. The pork is unevenly cooked, but not terrible. And the coconut is a little sweet, but it wasn't overly sweet, so it was kind of nice in the background. Listen, there's a lot of steak here. Yeah. It's one for one. You win this when you're back in, you lose this when you're out. Yes. Understood. Give us a second. guys battled it out really nicely. Winner of the third round. Jamie. Oh. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. I fought, I push my body and my mind to limits that I never thought I was capable of. And I'm actually happy about that. Great job, Chef. Great job, man. Because I went out giving a great fight. Byron, listen, you, you made some really great dishes. You came really, really close. But unfortunately, I have to ask you to exit the kitchen. Thank you, Chef. It's been an honor. <laughs> Thank you.
Yeah, good job. Thank you, guys. I'm very happy that I was able to tell my story to cook my food, and that to me is what makes me top chef. Chefs, thank you. Last year, shift over. Connect to the kitchen. Thanks for competing. Thank, thank, thank you. Chef. Great seeing you. Bye, guys. Good luck, good luck. Good luck. Oh. Love you all. See you on the other side. Bye, guys. Love you. <laughs> Chefs, this is it. Down to five. A lot on the line here. 250 grand. Title of top chef. Listen, you defend your turf. No one's back in from Last Chance Kitchen. That means we stay at five and we defended our turf. Love you, Byron, but yes. I'll see you later. Thank you, Chef. Thanks. Have a good night. Nice to meet you. You too.